the dead welcome him with open arms. The calamity took everybody after all. Kids sees a plane, frozen faces all around. You don't much care to see him. Not like this. These folks never saw the calamity coming, but someone did. Someone close. Someone who ain't like Mr. Beckley and his kindly wife. There's someone like him. Kid sees him there agape in the flesh. It's a snag or two trying to get to him. Stop, no matter what. He's got so many questions after all. Just ain't got time for answers. The Tunder brothers didn't make it. They never saw what it was like beyond the walls. Nor did the bird boy. Jawsons, they didn't make it. Grady Senior, Grady Junior, they didn't make it. But him, he survived. Kid finds proof enough that man ain't from around here. Just think, without that man, we wouldn't be here right now. Kid does what he has to do. What do you say to a man who's seen too much? Kid hasn't a clue, but he says this. We have to go. Please. He's a proper gentleman, that man. His name is Zolf. No hiding, he's an Ura. Folks like him ain't never been a common sight in Ceylonia. He's relieved to see a living face or two. The kid and I introduce ourselves in kind. Both to him and to each other for the first time. fought the Ura decades ago, but that was then. Things are different between us now. For Zolf, Ceylandia was like a second home. He's real worried about his first home, too. Far to the east. We all lost loved ones in the calamity, he says. I don't know how I'm gonna go on without mine. Zolf offers to help me plot the skyways for the kid. At least the calamity hasn't touched the stars, he says. He was born in the Tazzle Terminals. The Ura sent him on a mission of peace to our city, and he's lived here ever since. Kid ain't finished here yet. fragments of the old world and makes them whole again.
bits of some fragments, and the Bastion makes it good as new. If you're feeling low, count on the buttery flavor of our own Bastion bourbon. We tracked down a couple more cores near the edge of the city. No use praying to the gods these days. No time for it either. Kid says a little prayer anyway. Couldn't hurt, right? Pith or true. Place is a dead end in more ways than one. Folks used to make pilgrimage here to pay their respects to Pith, the bull. Well, the gods are long gone now. And the Orchard core is long gone too. Pith stood for something once. Something real. In time, though, the bull stopped being a symbol and started being decoration. He couldn't even save his loyal subjects. Pith makes a decent scarecrow, at least. through his hide. Kid breaks him to bits. Must have been guarding that shrine. So what'll it be? Invoke the gods? Or tell him off?
Now we can build a shrine of our own, though I got some alternatives in mind. Something that'll punch clean through the greasy hides. Windbags ain't much different from normal folks. All they want's a warm place to stay and have some meat. The calamity drove the windbags topside. Up here in this very fort. Could have been minding the business underground like in the old days. Supplies, but the kid sure can. He stashes the marshal's prize, goes back to some boy style. As for the windbags, Cinderbrick gave them enough heat metal to munch on for a while, but the fort ain't theirs by right. Can't blame them for one of them, though. So many of those sorry things hold up inside that old fort. Not a scratch on him as he presses on the higher ground. Thank <laughs> you. 
Kid shows up just as Ulf's telling me about his own journey to the city. Zolf's travels ain't much compared to what the kids had to go through for all this. The marshals seem like good men, he says. They treated him with dignity. Zolf brought his antique smoking pipe all the way from the terminals. Seems the only thing the calamity saved for Zolf was a smoking pipe. Even since the Ura surrendered to us, the marshals kept a wary eye on him. You're so zesty, it'll let you carry on through the worst of times. Respect to the old world and earn it in kind. <laughs> <laughs> 